Hi, this is Dr. Grande. I hope you find this video useful. If that's the case, please like it and subscribe to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching. Hello, Marcy. How you doing? I've been better. Been better? Yeah. yeah. I uh, saw that you called a few times between the last session and today you left a few messages yeah i was trying to get hold of you i had something i had to really needed to discuss with you but mm -hmm. nobody called me back i emailed you a couple times i never got a reply so i was just wondering what's going on with that we can talk about that i want to talk about that after getting those uh, messages remember we discussed the process for when your uh, mood deteriorates and you had a few other resources you wanted to connect with before calling me. Yeah, I kind of remember it. Uh, your brother was one of those resources. Oh, yeah. No, he's right. useless. Anyway, go on. Did you did you attempt to... No, he's so busy with it. Like, he's he, he could never help me. I don't think he even cares what I'm going through. He's got his own stuff to deal with. He's got his own family and all this stuff. And, yeah, he doesn't care. All right, so you didn't contact him first because you thought he, did, he doesn't care? Yeah. And we'd also talked about a few different friends that you had that you'd reach out to. You didn't contact them? or did Well, you? I did call my one friend, Beth, but she was like, oh, can I call you back? And of course she didn't because nobody ever calls me back. You know, I'm like, they all have their own lives. No one really cares what I'm doing. You know, it's always like that. So that's why I thought I could reach out to you mm -hmm. since you're supposed to be helping me. But apparently you never call me back or answer any of my emails. So... Right, we talked about how there's limitations on time and how it would be better if we could keep the therapy in here, in person, right? And not get really too excessive with the telephone calls. Uh, I realize that when you're in distress, there's that kind of feeling that it would be a good idea to call. Uh, but remember we discussed different levels of distress, and if it's something you know, common that you've been through before and you kind of know the outcome, connecting with one of those resources might be more helpful. Yeah, I just feel like you're the only one that can help me. You know, I mean, I, my boyfriend, like, things aren't going well with him. I thought he could help me, but mm -hmm. I guess he can't, and I think he's running around on me and all that. So I was just like, well, let me reach out to Dr. Grande, see if it can help me, because it seems like my last resort. But now, I remember you... Um, discussing a few weeks ago, your boyfriend, and you had a fairly high opinion of him. Like it was, it seemed like a positive. Yeah, he was great. He was great. And then, you know, he was in the other room and he got a text message, and I was like, well, let me just look at that. Because mm -hmm. I was just curious to see what's going on with him, because he never talks to me about anything. And so I looked at it, and it was a girl's name and number that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so. He came back in and you know, I like, put it away quickly. And I was like, didn't say anything. I like, what's wrong with you? Because I was acting weird and I was like, nothing. So then he went out. So I followed him. And then he went to like some friend's house. And I don't know if there's girls there or not. But so I kind of think he's running around with me, but I don't know. And I can't trust him. I can't trust anybody. You know? So I don't know. I mean, he was so awesome before, but mm -hmm. now I just don't know. But he was everything I ever wanted. Yeah, I remember you seemed very excited about uh, where that relationship could go. Yeah. And you seem like you're uh, much more negative about yeah, it Yeah, I mean, if he's not going to be faithful to me, what am I supposed to do? You know? I mean, it's just like every other guy that I've ever dated. Like, either leave me or cheat on me or lie to me. So, I mean, I don't know why I thought this one was going to be different. I, seriously, why would this one be different? So, you have, you had this experience with the text message, and you, you don't know, if, you don't know any more than that. But it sounds like you kind of jumped to he's cheating. So you know you went to a, had a text message and went to someone's house. Yeah, I don't know if they were related. The text message and him leaving. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I just assume so. I'm just gonna assume because it seems to be a pattern in my life. You know, everybody lets me down. 
Could it be that you're jumping to that conclusion prematurely? Probably. But I guess it's all I know. That's how I've always been treated, so I kind of feel like, why would this be different? Mm-hmm. Even though I thought it was in the beginning. But I don't know. So you feel like you've seen this all before, this pattern? Yeah. I guess I just always pick the wrong people, or it's probably just me. I think I'm the one that's just unlovable. I've been told that growing up a lot, so I think it's just me. Because he's great. I mean, he's great. And he's good looking, he has a good job, and I always thought, I'm like, why is he with me? And then, now I see. Like, he doesn't really want to be with me. Whoever he's texting, he, that's probably the person who wants to be with his. She's probably like pretty and has, she probably has a good job and she's got everything going for her. And so. So you really, um, this week at least, you don't seem to think a lot of yourself. No. I mean, when things are going bad in my relationships, they really seem to get to me, you know. Mm-hmm. So in a way, you feel like your mood is... Um, subject to how your current romantic relationship is going. Yeah, I guess that's pretty right on. Yeah. I would say that. Is there anything that you can do from your side to improve what's going on? No, I don't think so. I think it's everybody else that is treating me wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So, unless I find the right person who's going to treat me right, then... I don't know what I'm going to do. So. so the so the key to feeling better is finding the right person. Yeah, I think so. And like I said, I thought he was the right one in the beginning, and now I don't know anymore. But you know, I really don't want him to leave me because, like, then what I'm going to do? Now I'm going to be alone. I don't want to be alone mm-hmm. because I love him. But you know, so I think I I probably will forgive him and just stay with him because I don't want to be alone. I'm too scared to do that. I mean, I don't want to be um, alone without somebody, you know? I really mm, need it's somebody. A fear of yours. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So does some of this seem, like what you're describing with your mood, does some of this seem like you're out of control? Yes. I feel like I can't control their people's actions, Mm -hmm. and that really makes me mad. That makes me really angry. Um, You know, that, what am I supposed to do? And so, I think acting out and following them and checking their text messages, and it's the only thing that makes me feel in control, I guess. I don't know. I know in the past when we've talked about this, you've mentioned that you thought that that behavior could be driving them away, too. Yeah. I mean, I can see that. I mean, people want, you know, some that they can trust, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure I've always been honest with them, but I'm always looking for things that they're going to do to manipulate me or try to, like, you know, screw me over or whatever, so... I You're guess I suspicious. can never let my guard down. Yeah, yeah, I'm suspicious. I wonder if sometimes you acting on those suspicions, if that's not making things a little worse in those relationships. Yeah, probably. But, I mean, like I said before, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be without somebody. You know, I need somebody. I need somebody. I need somebody mm-hmm. to be with. You know, I I need someone to help me with things. I don't want to be alone. You know, that's, you know, and he he has said things to me like, you can't call me all the time at work because I'm at work and you leave me like 40 voice messages because I just want to know if he's actually at work. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, you can't do those things because I'm going to get fired and then then where are we going to be? And he's like, you know, and you can't like call the numbers in my phone and find out who they are and like hang up because my friends know it's you. And you can't, you know, have your friends come to the bar and see who I'm with and, like, report back to you. Like, that's, he's like, I don't want to be in a relationship with someone that doesn't trust me like that. So now, you know, I'm really scared of losing him. Mm-hmm. You know? So, 
you have called other boyfriends and this boyfriend many times yeah on the phone yeah I just want to check up and see what they're doing if they said they're at the place that they said they were going mm-hmm. you know I just want to know that I'm not being lied to because I've always been lied to all my life I've been lied to so is all that calling something you do to relieve anxiety well when I find out they're at the place that they said they were then I feel better for at least you know for a few minutes till the next time I'm like oh, wait well, maybe they left. Let me see where they are now. You know, and then it kind of builds upon itself until I just get so frustrated. And then usually it ends with like a screaming match when I do see them. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's a lot of screaming and yelling. A lot of screaming and yelling and accusations and finger pointing and just yeah, that's not good. It's not a good scene no. when that, those kinds of things go down. But, like I said, I really love him. I don't want to be without him. I don't know how I would live without him. All right, so there's, there's screaming, there's yelling, um, and some discontentment, but there's also you know, this love you have for him mm-hmm. and this fear that you'll be alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot of emotion here driving different behaviors. I said I would do whatever it took to, for him to stay with me. You know, mm-hmm. and um, he doesn't really talk about it. I think he gets really mad at me for being so needy. He says, like, he's like, you're needy. And why don't you do your own stuff and leave me alone? And you know, you need to have your own life. And mm-hmm. you know, I don't like to be ignored. You know, I was ignored all growing up. He had a big family. I just got lost in the shuffle. And now here I am. So with all these things going on, with all these kind of negative feelings, and negative self-image, and trouble with the boyfriend, like this week, today, what's, what's your goal? What, what do you want to change? Well, I guess I would like to be able to trust people more and not feel so desperate. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, and I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do that. To be able to trust people more. So maybe one place we could start is to ensure that you're accurately assessing what, for example, your boyfriend's doing. Right? So in the past, when we've talked, you've been suspicious about different behaviors, and it turns out in many of those cases, nothing was happening. Yeah. And the kind of chasing them around and making observations, that's what caused some of the problem. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, that's what they say the problem is, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It could be something else. I mean, it could, could be, be somebody, somebody else. They could mm-hmm. have been met somebody better. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's what they tell me. Maybe they're trying to be nice to try to get out of the relationship. There's no way to know. Right. That seems to be where your mind goes first. It's kind of the, the worst case or one of the worst case scenarios so sometimes with managing mood uh, one of the one of the keys to success is encouraging accurate thinking logical thinking right so there's a lot of emotion involved when you're falling around and when you're checking the cell phone like are you are you feeling yeah I, do, I don't I don't feel good I mean I feel completely anxious when I do it for A, I might get caught. Mm-hmm. You know, that's always a thing in my mind. And like B, like why am I doing this? But it's All something right. beyond my control sometimes. I just need to know. It would be possible to, when you have these thoughts like that, say let's um, work on this idea that you're worried about him cheating. Right, so you have this thought that something like um, he's going to leave me, he doesn't really love me, he's cheating. Is that close to what you're thinking? Yeah, Yeah. that's pretty close. And after you have a thought like that, are you, is that when you're like checking up on him and checking on his phone and confronting him? Yeah, it compounds itself, definitely. 
So something happens that leads to that thought. And I think that would be an area where maybe we could try to focus some energy. So maybe for this week, I know things are still tumultuous between you and your boyfriend. Maybe this week, before you follow him around, check his cell phone, confront him, anything like that, instead of doing that, before you have that feeling, uh, or as you have that feeling, that you want to do that, maybe document what is going through your mind at that moment, like what you're thinking. Okay. And I'll try that. It seems likely, based on our experience together, that this is something that'll happen a few times between now and next week. There'll be a few times when you want to confront him or follow him around. You could write down what you're thinking at each point, and not confront him or follow him around. So hold off on the behavior. Focus your it's energy on hard. writing down those thoughts. That's gonna be hard. It's difficult, yeah. I'll try. I know sometimes it feels like the emotion kind of takes charge. Yeah, sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing. Mm. I just like find myself in the car. I'm like, where am I going? I'm like, what am I doing? You mm. know. Yeah, the emotions are powerful. However, I'd like to be able to get these thoughts. I think that there might be a way to improve your mood if we can find out um, how these thoughts are working and maybe try to make some adjustments there. I know it's difficult, and I know the emotions are hard to control for you. Do you think that's a, uh, a step you could try this week, though? And, and so whenever you, whenever you find yourself about to do something that's maybe going to antagonize the situation, write down at that point what you're thinking. Maybe that way you can kind of channel some energy there and and not act out on that. And it's also um, something we can take a look at in session next time and, and review those thoughts. Okay. See what we find. See if we find any patterns. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I know this is a struggle for you, and and I realize that uh, writing all these thoughts down and, and following this process is new and different. I want you to try to stick with it if you can. I think I think that you you could be able to to uh, benefit from this if you can stick with it. Okay. All right. Try. Okay, give it a try. Mm -hmm. All right, Marcy. Let's go um, with that plan and write down those thoughts. We'll go over them next week. And between now and next week, the same thing, like in terms of when you want to reach out to me. Take a look at those guidelines we've worked out with that process and work through the process and, and see if you're actually supposed to contact me, if it's really something that requires that attention, or if some of your supports can take care of that. All right? I know it's tough when you call me and I can't get back to you. Yeah, I really feel rejected when that happens. Yeah, I'm not rejecting you. I know it feels that way. I'm trying to set a boundary that will help you and trying to focus um, our time in here instead of on the phone, all right? So if you could apply that same, that same logic to when you want to call me, work through the process and write down the thought, okay? We'll go from there and I will see you next week. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Marcy.